In this video, we're gonna teach you exactly how to create job descriptions and tasks, interview and onboard your virtual assistants or people that you're hiring for contract for your agency. So stay tuned, we got a good one for you. All right, welcome back everybody and thank you for watching. If this is your first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell in the bottom right hand corner. That way you get updated with all of our future content, free resources, giveaways, every single thing that we do here at my channel. Oh, and PS, make sure you stay tuned to the end of today's video because we'll give you a $50 credit for free to hire your first virtual assistant. That means your first virtual assistant, you get free $50. So make sure you stay tuned to the end. Now guys, before we get into talking about the steps that you wanna take, and I'll show you some on-screen examples of some things you're going to want to do, I want you guys to understand that VAs are important, okay? Contractors for your agency, hiring people in general for your agency is super important. The reason why I say this is because in my program, to my students even, I always tell them, as soon as you get that first job, you need to go ahead and hire your first contractor or maybe even your first few contractors. Reason why is because if you're the one that's planning, writing, creating, editing, coming up with strategy, that leaves you no time to go out and actually sell and land more clients for your agency, which in the beginning, that is your most important thing. You have to work on growing your business, which means you have to drive in an influx of customers very, very quickly if you want to scale your business quicker. Outside of that, guys, these VAs or these contractors are experts in their specific niche of business, meaning you can't be the best at everything, right? You can become very well-rounded with specific topics, you can understand how they work, but to become an expert at every single thing with your digital marketing agency is going to be super, super tough. I don't even personally consider my myself an expert at every last aspect of running an agency. Like I don't write content. I will never be a great writer. I don't want to be a great writer. Thus, I hire people to do writing for me, right? And that's really what you have to focus on and understand is the quicker you can get all of those jobs that you don't like or that you really shouldn't be focusing on off, off of your plate and onto an expert's plate, you're going to create a better quality of product, which means more customers and better customers. So guys, let's go ahead and hop on over to my screen over here and we are going to show you about the three steps that you're going to need to take to basically hire your first virtual assistant or contractor. All right, everyone, as you can see here on my screen, we have a template for a job description, okay? This is actually our template for an SEO manager. So one thing I actually want to mention is that since this is a template, we actually take this and break it down even more based on the specific requirements that we have for a specific job. All right, so what that means is not every SEO manager or not every SEO job is going to require the same tasks to be done, right? I could have a client who needs on-page SEO and technical SEO, and then I could also have a client that needs to work on local SEO. And there's different aspects that come into each of those types of campaigns. So what we do is we create a template that kind of goes through the basics of every SEO job post that we would need to create. And then we add in specifics to that job post when we recreate or when we go to actually post that specific job post, right? So you guys can see right here, we cover responsibilities, right? So you can see developing and implementing effective search engine optimization strategies, coordinating content, design, social media, pay-per-click, PPC marketing, and other activities. And what that really means is making sure that our SEO efforts go along with everything else that we're doing from a social perspective, ad perspective, content marketing perspective, everything, right? <clears throat> then we go into the job brief, right? So basically here, we are looking for an SEO manager to coordinate SEO efforts, including on-site and off-site optimization and keyword expansion research. You'll also, you'll also oversee paid search uh, campaigns to ensure success. And really what that means is they'll collaborate with the PPC manager to make sure that we're getting the most out of our keyword targeting. And so really the job brief is just a description of what this person's job is supposed to do, how they're actually supposed to benefit the company. From here, you move into specific responsibilities, right? Things that they're actually going to do on a day-to-day -day basis, week-by-week -week basis, and month-to-month -month basis. Finally, you're gonna wrap up with the requirements. What knowledge they need to have, what skill sets they need to have, uh, any proficiencies that they need to have in place already, not things that you need to train them on, right? Things that they already have in place so that way you can get them onboarded and get them rolling with the work that they have for you to complete. Now, some other things that I wanna mention to you guys before you actually get to the point where you hire a virtual assistant or a contractor is that you should probably consider setting up workflows and internal processes for that VA ahead of time. A big issue that I see with a lot of people, including some of my students have had the same issue is 
people go to a platform like Upwork or FreeUp and they try to get someone to do work for them. The issue is they don't create a process or a workflow or a list of rule sets basically for that person to follow so that way they know exactly what to do to complete the job. So for example, let's say you give someone, <clears throat> you, you need to hire a web developer, right? Well, the issue is people go online and they say, hey, I need a web developer. I need you to develop a website for an attorney. They say it's for an attorney. Here's the location. Here's their URL. Here's their business. Build us a website. Well, really, that's not going to get the job done. You're going to get that website back and it's going to be missing things. It's not going to look the way you want it to. And so usually the person goes and blames the VA for getting that job wrong. But the reality is that VA is not going to be able to do the job that they need. So what is going to remedy that issue? Well, basically, the person who is hiring the VA or the web designer should be creating a site map, should be creating a wireframe that they hand over to the web designer and developer to say, hey, put this together. That way, that web designer has a complete plan of what the website should look like, what content it should include, what images should be there, what colors should be there, fonts, all of that information is included so that way they're not playing a guessing game. And again, that's why a lot of people mess up with VAs is because they think, oh, well, this person is just going to know what I want. And that is never the case. So never expect a VA to just assume anything. You want to give them the guidelines and the structure, they go and they actually implement. Now quickly, let's talk about budgeting, right? Because that's another thing. I'm going to pull up here on my screen a notepad and we're going to show you guys how to budget. It's super simple. Really what you need to do is you need to take a couple of things into consideration. One, what is the job, right? So basically for here, we'll just say for, you know, to keep it simple, we're doing social media management, right? And with social media management, we're going to do, let's just say three posts per week. We don't create any video for them. If they need video, they either provide us with video or we can charge them to create video. We will create graphics for them and we will write, will write the copy. We'll do the page optimization, all of that, right? But let's just say for this, we know the job is going to cost and all of this is speculative, just to keep numbers easy, do not cost your job at this, you know, just because I'm saying to, okay? But let's just say it costs $1,000 to get this done. Now, it would never cost $1,000. If it costs you $1,000 to get three posts per week for a month done, then you're doing something wrong. But let's just say again, for numbers sake, to keep it easy, it costs $1,000. Well, from here, I need to make some money, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it down. Well, social media management is going to require a designer, and that can be for video or photos. We need a copywriter. We need a scheduler. <clears throat> a proofer. Um, 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 and a strategist, we'll just stop there. There could be other jobs involved, um, but we're, we're just gonna say these five. Well, what we have to do is we have to figure out, okay, well, for three posts per week, how many hours is this designer going to need to edit? We'll just say three times four is going to be 12. So 12 images per month, right? That's what we're, we're doing. Or 12 short GIFs, something like that, right? That doesn't really take too much time. To create 12 images for a designer, it should probably take them anywhere from two to three hours. Right, and that's all we're doing. We're gonna guesstimate, and the more you do this, the better you're going to get at your guesstimations, right? You'll get several jobs like this, and you'll understand, okay, three posts per week, that's two hours easy. If they go over two hours, they're doing too much, right? So two to three hours. Now what we need to do is we need to say, okay, well, what is a standard hourly rate for a designer? Well, that could range anywhere from a good designer in another country, it could be anywhere from $10, upwards of $150 per hour, if you're here for say uh, in the US and you're using the best possible, right? Well, we're a new agency, so we're not trying to spend the most. And I know I can go to Ukraine or Slovenia or somewhere in like Eastern Europe or even the Philippines and get a great designer for like 10 bucks, right? $10 an hour, they're editing all of your images, your video for you. So what does this mean? Well, we'll take the average, which is 2.5 hours times $10 per hour. So what is that budget? Means we're spending $25 to get all of the images done for this specific job. So are we within our budget? Hell yeah, we're only $25 out of a cost of 100, all right? So we're, we're, at, we're doing really, really well here. What we need to do is we want to make sure that our $1,000, what we, what we take from that is our profit margin, right? So let's say our profit margin, well, I don't actually need a calculator. Our profit margin is 20%, right? So we'll say 20% profit margin. That means we're trying to make $200 off of that $1,000, right? 
That's it. So what we need to do is when we get done costing this job out, we need to make sure that we're making at least $200. So that means we can spend $800 getting this campaign built, right? And that's all you're really doing for pricing and costing the job. Super simple. So really quick question, guys. Have you ever had a VA that has not done the job that you were looking for or that provided a bad experience? Tell us about that experience below. I wanna know, did it really come down to the fact that the VA didn't know what they were doing or was there something that you might've been able to do to make that experience a little better for both of you so that way communication was clearer and you got the result you were looking for? Again, leave it in the comments and let me know. Okay, so now that you've come up with the job description, you've determined your budget, the next thing that you're going to wanna do is interview your virtual assistants and start getting people really in the works so that way you know who you're talking to, what you need out of the people or what type of person really you're looking for, right? So what we're going to do is we're gonna talk about two big platforms. Number one is one of my favorites, obviously FreeUp, run by my buddy Nathan Hirsch. I definitely recommend checking out FreeUp. Again, we are going to give you a $50 credit to this platform at the end of this video. We'll tell you how to get access to it, so make sure you stay tuned to the end. But guys, all you do is you come in once you're in, you click submit request, and then you're just going to take everything that you put in this job description over here, and you're going to put it in over here. So what I like to do first and foremost is create an enticing title, right? Um, because especially like for Upwork, where the cool thing about FreeUp is they actually have people who are assigned to helping you find people for your job, right? And they don't even charge you. Upwork is actually charging people now for everything. So that's why FreeUp has actually become my favorite platform recently, because they do it the right way. They don't charge you for unnecessary things. So I definitely recommend looking at free up guys, but you want to make your title stand out, right? So what I do is something like this. I do a little star ongoing work in all caps. So that way they know this is a job where they're going to have ongoing work. Now, obviously don't do that if it's not ongoing, uh, ongoing work. And then we'll put SEO manager and then we'll do on page off page local SEO. Those are the jobs we want them to be good at, right? So you can see this is gonna be a lot more enticing, right, than just writing SEO manager, right? This, this is easily going to draw more eyes. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to the job description and we're going to take all of this job brief right here. I'm just gonna copy it and paste it. Now again, since we, let's say we had specifics we were looking for, that's where I would go in here and I would make an adjustment to any of this information in here that we maybe didn't need or add information that we did need. We'll put in our budget for budget for SEO managers. It just kind of depends. So we'll go anywhere from here to about 40 to $50. <clears throat> and again, if you need the best of the best, you can go above that. Next, we're gonna pick the location. We prefer to have someone in the United States, UK or Canada, just because we need somebody who speaks English or is near our time zone. Um, and right here, I can actually write, you know, United States only because we don't want to hire UK or Canada. We really want someone in the US, right? We can do long-term, more than three months, or you can do other and put ongoing, something like that. How many hours or days per week do you need the freelancer? If you have something specific, so we'll just say three days, not 34 days. Uh, what are you scheduling? What are your scheduling preferences for the freelancer? You know, flexible as set by the freelancer. Do you have a consistent schedule that you need them to work? You know, you select that. Does the freelancer have any have to have availability on the weekends? Do they need to have audio or video calls with you? If you have other, you know, must have video capabilities uh, as fast as possible, or if you have, you know, within the week, if you're not in a rush, what do you need there? And then how do you prefer to be contacted? Personally, I don't like to give out my email. I'd much rather do something like, you know, here on platform. I believe they do it here on platform, right? Yeah, I believe, yeah, right here on platform, you can do requests and they can actually send you messages here. So you can say here on platform and keep everything in here. Or if you wanted to, you could do email or you could do Skype, whatever. And then once you're done, you just click submit request. Again, the cool thing about FreeUp is they actually go out and they start finding people to send to you automatically. Like you don't have to actually go out and start doing the search. Whereas if you use something like Upwork, you actually do have to go out and do the search yourself. Okay guys, so for this next part, I can't show you the messages that I have with other people. People really don't like it when I put their, you know, conversations that we have about work in my YouTube videos. So I've stopped doing that. But what happens is when you set out these job postings or you put something on free up or Upwork, essentially people start applying to the job. The biggest thing you have to understand about when they start applying is asking the right questions, right? And looking at their data that they're providing you. So looking at things like their description. If you have a copywriter who reaches out to you and applies to a job, but their description trying to sell you on hiring them sucks, 
do you think you should hire that copywriter? Probably not, right? That doesn't make sense. Why would you hire someone who can't sell you in their own description, right? So you want to actually look through some of the attributes of that person. If someone says they're an SEO manager, great. Tell them to send you over some reports or give you access to some dashboards so that way you can look through some of their performance, right? What a lot of people do is they send over links, but these are sites that they worked on in the past and they're not currently working on them right now. So is the information relevant? Well, not really. You could have another SEO manager or that old website could have a different SEO manager working on it right now. So the data going on right now is not relevant. So if you had that situation where you were hiring an SEO manager, you would say, hey, can I see some current websites that you're currently working on? Can I see current reports of those websites? websites before and after, right? Before you came there, what was the search engine traffic like? What was it like after, right? And that's really all you're trying to do. And then you start asking questions related to each individual service. So what do you know about local SEO? What's your experience with local SEO? What's your experience with on-page, off-page SEO? What's your experience with link building, right? It's all about the questions you ask at this point and making sure that you're trying to figure out as much about that person's experience as possible. But not only that, you want to determine what type of person they are because it's hard to work with someone who just sucks, right? You, you always hate those people who they're just terrible people to work with. They're never easy to get along with. They always try to argue about stupid things. So you don't want to work with those people. You kind of want to avoid them. So that's where asking them simple things about their strengths, their weaknesses, understanding their personality, what's important to them in life, right? What are their goals in life and professionally? Understanding those questions actually helps you understand that person, which will tell you whether or not you should hire that person. Another thing that's important to ask with contractors and freelancers is to understand their work schedule currently. A a lot of the time people will hire another contractor when that contractor has 25 jobs on their plate already and they're not outsourcing any of that work right so what's the issue there well they're probably not going to give you the time and attention that you need for all of your campaigns thus meaning you probably shouldn't hire that person and we've actually created something on this called the four cues it's over on our blog article which is right below in the description if you want to see the four cues and a bunch of the questions and things that you should actually take into consideration make sure to check out that blog link then finally you want to move into onboarding your person that you hire eventually you'll get to a point where you set an agreement you create the contract you send it over either via upwork or however you plan on sending that out and then once you actually come to agreement then you get into the onboarding process so after your interview and everything is signed the first thing you need to figure out is if they're on Upwork then you're good you don't really need to actually send them a w-9 or anything like that or any other type of information where they need to fill out for tax reasons and the reason why is because Upwork actually manages all of that for you but let's say you wanted to take that person or contractor off of Upwork which is even though it's frowned upon it's something that you should eventually do if they have been working for you for two years on Upwork, there's no reason for you and him or her to both be paying that Upwork fee, right? So get them off of Upwork. And if that's the case, then you need to send them a W-9 if you live in the US, which is the tax form that's associated to a contractor. If you're in another country, then you need to send them that associated form. Finally, once you do that, if you have someone that isn't on Upwork, then you need to get them on some type of time tracking app. We use Toggle. You wanna to get them on a communication platform. We use Slack. So we actually have someone who goes in and looks at that person, gathers all their information, uh, which we'll show you here on my screen in a second. And then we take that information and basically just put it into an Excel spreadsheet so that way we have it on that contractor. And we know their hourly rate, how many hours they're allowed to work each week, what their name is, their contact information, when they started, when they left, all of that information is already in place. So really quickly, let's hop on over to my screen and I'll show you another example. So essentially what we do is I actually have Ted, who is our operations manager. He goes in and actually sits down on a call with our newly hired VA and he collects all of this information. So you can see email one, email two, if they have two emails, some people do have two emails and it can be useful to have both. We get a phone number if they have one. Uh, their actual title, what they do internally, right? Not what their title is for their business, but inside of our business, what is it that they do? Any functions that they do, basically what their job is. We have their status, are they part-time or full-time? Then we have our tracking platform that we use, whether we use Upwork, we use Toggle or whatever. Their pay rate, hourly cap if they have one, time zone where they're located, which is definitely important to know because it tells you when they're going to be available or not, and then any additional notes that might be needed about a specific person that you're hiring, right? So all of this is important information that you need to take down, and then from there, you just get them set up on all of your software platforms or anything that they might need to get their job done. So from here, all you're going to do is move on into any training that you might have for that specific VA. Maybe it's a specific process that you have uh, for your agency or a specific job that needs to be done. 
but really you're just training them on everything that they need to know to work with you. You shouldn't have to be training them on the job itself. If you have to train them on the job, I don't know why you hired them. And then after the first month, two months, three months of working with that contractor, a great thing to do for you as an employee is to get some feedback. Ask them questions like, what was your experience like? Is there anywhere we can improve as an agency? Is there anywhere where you thought that we did really well as an agency? And that way it lets you know how to improve your hiring process, uh, anything that you want to do for your employees and really just your morality or your morale throughout your entire agency. It's able to boost everything for your agency so that way you produce a better quality of work. You have a lower churn rate for your employees, meaning you don't have to spend as much money to hire people, which is always a good thing. So really quick guys, if you haven't started your SMMA yet, or if you haven't really found maybe that trainer that you think is good enough to learn from for your social media marketing agency, I promise you, you found one right here. Check out this video up here in the top right hand corner on how to start your agency the right way. And then finally, guys, the last thing that you'll want to kind of set up with this VA is your meeting schedule. You should not just hire a VA and let them go, especially if it's someone that does work on a weekly basis. Let's say a copywriter. That person needs to meet with you at least once a week so you can discuss anything that didn't happen last week, new projects that are coming up, any errors that might have happened with the creation of a piece of content. Everything needs to be built out so that way you're, you're constantly communicating with these VAs and that communication is clear. All right, so if you have a job that needs to be done, they need to understand that job completely. These meetings help you do that past the point of the hire. But guys, that is it for today's video, and that is really the process for hiring a virtual assistant or a contractor. Now, at the beginning of this video, I told you that we would give you a $50 credit for your first one. So make sure to check right below this video in the description, and you will see the link to get your first free $50 for your contractor or virtual assistant. But that is it for today's video, guys, and I will see you on the next one. So until then, Serial Entrepreneur out. Bye, guys. Ready to start? living the six-figure work wherever be your own boss lifestyle well at serial entrepreneur academy we'll teach you how to use a laptop and internet to start your own social media and digital marketing agency get started with our free facebook ads training links in the description below guys see you in the course serial entrepreneur out